All right. Show me the duty. Um, I had a couple of requests uh, to make a video on how I created duty math channels and how to measure a duty cycle. Um, this capture is a spinoff of a video I made called Take Charge. Um, I'm going to put a link to it in the description. Um, this is the same car with yet another failed alternator. Um, I don't want to make this video about this as a case study, more about how to make the math channels uh, for uses such as this or other uses when something's duty controlled. Uh, but I will talk about this a little bit. Uh, that's the failure right there, but uh, we'll go over it. Uh, real quick, let me just show you my setup and uh, we will explain or I will explain how I got to this and how I got this up here which is uh, if you look at it is totally opposite of that so let me show you my setup real quick so here we go on the screen you're gonna see a blue trace which that is directly hooked to the battery uh, the red trace is gonna be the sensing wire the green trace which you saw the fallout that is the little bulb and that's the problem with this alternator is intermittently the little battery light comes on so that means you've got to have a power here and a little less power here not necessarily ground but a little less power turns the bulb on and then this wire here um, that's our duty cycle that's kind of the focus of this video um, all my test points are at the alternator so let's see let me pull up a scope capture here that's live and we'll go from there so here we go blue is battery like we talked about this is the sensing uh here's the fallout basically when this dropped it turned my little battery light on here's my duty control a um, couple of ways to measure duty okay first off in the video that i made take charge you will see in that video that I am commanding the alternator up and down and it's 10 20 30 40 and so on and so forth so if I were just to take a straight measurement let me get that off the screen right there uh, actually you know what let's do real quick let's put some uh, cursors out let's just put one there and just put one there and we're on channel D and we want to do a duty cycle and let's go between rulers and we hit OK so it pops up 80% duty well my scan tool said 20% duty so what I'm saying is this signal uh, the scope is measuring a positive it's measuring up here I want it to measure down here meaning I want it to measure this. I want this number to reflect this. Right now, this 80% is telling me it's 80% here. My scope is telling, or my scan tool is telling me it's at 20. So how do I make the two jive? You don't have to do that. Um, as long as you know that the scope is telling you the positive side. Like if this were, let's just say this were a variable timing control solenoid. On the Nissan world, the more ground you have, the more movement you get. So it's ground side controlled. The scope tells you the positive side. So it's backwards. So in this case, my scan tool said 20%. My scope is telling me it's an 80% duty. As long as you know that, then you're fine. So somewhere in here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock these rulers. So somewhere in here, I actually active tested and created from 20% to 30%. Like I said, that other video that I'm gonna link will show you what I was doing. So watch this number right here, this 80%. And as I drag, oh, and by the way, I locked the rulers right there, little lock guy right there. And as I drag it through here, see it dropping, dropping, dropping. Okay, so right in here, I clicked up 
from 20% to 30%. If you're like me, I don't like the confusion. I want to see this. Um, if you had four buffers of this garbage right here, I don't want to sit here and drag and drag and drag and drag and drag. I want to make a math channel. I want a math channel to do the work for me. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's take this off. That pop-up is annoying. Let's take that off. Let's go up here to tools. Actually, let's clear our whole screen. We'll go to tools. We're going to go to math channels. Um, I've already made it, but we're guess what? We're going to do it again. We're going to hit create. Uh, we're going to go to advanced and we want duty. And then we got to tell it which channel. We're on channel D, so as simple as that. Let's go next. Um, we're just going to keep it named duty D. You can name it whatever you want. We're going to keep, uh, we're going to use a black uh, trace. Uh, we'll just keep it as percent. And what I am going to do here is we know duty ratio is zero, which is off to 100% on, and that kind of hones right in on it. But let's just, let's do 500. That way it doesn't drill right down into it. You can come back and change this number a thousand times to tailor it to your needs. I'm just gonna do the 500, and that way it puts me a line on the screen, and then I can come back and adjust this if I feel like there's a fault somewhere that I need to really drill into. I know I'm working within 20 and 30%, so I could make this guy 40, and it would really show me definition. Uh, it, it stresses the software a little bit, but it will work. So let's hit next. Let's hit next. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Nothing on the screen. Well, you can see where my scale is. I'm in the 200, so we're really going to have to roll up here right there. So, what in the world happened there? Right here, I'm at 80. Move this guy up. In fact, you know what? We're just going to turn... Let's turn B off and just get it out of the way. And we'll just turn the... We'll turn A off because that's just battery voltage. Like I said, this isn't really about this car. It's about how to set this up. And then, right here, I went from 80 to 70. Well, it's still reading opposite of what my scan tool is telling me. Now, granted, it's telling me there's a change. And if you look in here real close, the width of... Let's do this real quick. Let's, uh, we'll just put a cursor right there. And we'll put a cursor right there. And once again, we'll lock them. And then we'll drag it. And look, okay, that one's the same. All right, boom. Right there's the change. That's where it went from 20 to 30. And the software is spot on telling me that. But it's also telling me 80 and, and 70. So I'm lazy, dude. I want to make sure that this scope, this signal, is telling me exactly what the scan tool is. So let's redo our math channel. Make one simple adjustment and it comes in perfect. So let's take him off there. Let's go back into him. We're just going to highlight him. Let's edit him. We're going to use duty, but let's put a minus sign in front of that. Let's hit next. We can leave the name the same. You can name it, like I said. We can put, uh, we'll just name this thing More Duty. We'll change the name of it. Uh, we're going to leave our parameters the same here. And now let's turn them on. Boop. There it is. So now let's get all this mess off the screen. So now when I put a line on there, look at that, 19.3. Well, in my world, you can call that 20. So the scan tool said 20. And then right there, I clicked the button up one time, and it went from 20 to 30. And you can see the software is telling me perfectly that that's where I made the change.
and shortly thereafter this alternator failed. So that in a nutshell is how I made the negative duty cycle. Now this is a signal. On this particular case this is a signal that I'm checking. If this were a command, let's say a blower motor command, let's say a timing, um, you know, a VVT style actuation. In the world I live in, the Nissan world, everything is negative controlled. So I use this math channel a lot. I want to make sure that what that scan tool is telling me is what the actual uh, component is getting. If I'm back probed directly at the component and I see the change that I command or the computer commands, then I know something's not lying. I know that everything's on the up and up. That's why I like this. And if you have something positively controlled, like earlier in Nissan's, the line pressure solenoids, um, they were grounded to the case and the control unit would apply a positive duty. So in that case, I wouldn't use the negative sign. I would just go duty A, B, C, or D, and it would show me exactly what the scan tool was showing me. And when I'm diagnosing or if I am questioning the control unit, I wanna take um, as much guessing, as much math that I gotta do in my head out of the equation because the job's already hard enough and if I'm if I'm in the weeds this deep, I am looking for something. I am looking for a lie. I'm looking for a control unit that is not telling me the truth. And, and if I'm doing this, um, I'm in deep. But I had a couple requests of how to do it, so that's how I do it. Um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It works, and it works on lots and lots and lots of different things that are duty controlled. Just remember, if you use the measurements down here, it's going to show you positive control. If you have a negative control system, uh, it's basically the opposite. If you can remember that, then you don't even need to do the math channel. Um, sometimes I forget, I get excited, I get so deep in the moment. I like the math channel. Um, anyways, back to this car. This alternator would fail. It would flicker the battery light on. Um, this is the exact same car from the video Take Charge. That alternator flat out wouldn't charge. This one charges fine. It's just when it, when this alternator or when the commuter, computer, excuse me, commands this thing go to 20 to 30, it drops out right there. And that little dropout makes the battery light come on, which makes my customers unhappy. Uh, of course, this car never got back to the customer. Um, so anyways, I can't remember who asked me to do the video, but thank you for the request. Um, I hope this makes sense. There's a lot of different ways to measure things. Use the software, let the software do the work for you. Uh, if this were a fallout in here, you would see it. Uh, the other thing I did is I put a little bit of filter on this. If I were to take the filter off, let me show you real quick before I forget. And I put this on. Let me turn the green trace off. We're done talking about that. All right, see all this bunch of crap in here? All right. There's noise in this signal. The software is counting the noise. Um, I'm not saying you should always filter out, but this right here is really not my issue, all this noise. So to kind of keep down on the confusion, what I do is I do it like that. I turn the filter on and you can even back this filter down until the noise comes back if you want uh, just remember take your time when you're clicking because it the software has to process all this so that's just like a little tip and let me show you real quick the noise I'm talking about so let me turn that off so I have no filter so let me just zoom in here see these little these little doodads right here it, it's more than likely the ignition system just bleeding through um, that it's it's not a problem on this case but it drives the software crazy so what I like to do is I'll turn the filter on 
and I'll sit and just kind of watch the screen until the you know it starts squaring back up if you take too if you put too much filter in there it just destroys the signal so you know the the signal's still nice and square it just takes the hair off of it and then that way when you do turn your your math channel on you uh you lose all that yuck in there so hope you enjoyed the video um like i said if it doesn't make sense to you go back and watch the charge video take charge i think i'm gonna try to link it and i did mention in another video i'll probably try to link it too it was called um electric vvt where i used a negative duty math channel to kind of monitor what my vvt actuator wanted versus what it was doing so thanks for whoever uh I can't remember who it is, or I would definitely mention your name. Thank you for the, the suggestion, and uh, stay tuned for more videos.